uh, up at the Adams Diggins in Old Canyon uh, near the fireplace, the Adams fireplace. Uh, we had hunted that for several years, metal detected around there, found spoons with the, the ends bent on them. And they were getting gold with those spoons. You'd get a, a pinch of gold, which would probably be a dollar. And uh, we, had, we had been looking since about 87 around the fireplace. And then about 90, 92 probably, I found this pendant. And it, it's, uh, I always thought it was uh, Aztec or something to that effect. But I found that near the uh, the corral, the old corral. And right here, if you, you get the, the light just perfect on it, you can see the head. You can see the head of the eagle right there. And then the, the neck behind it and the wings come out on both sides right like that. Well, that is old for sure. But this is this is like a copper but it's an embossed copper and it's, it's got to be real old. And then I found this over by, uh, it's in the old canyon. It's where I found the other uh, half of the spoon with yeah, the there's, treasure. There's a Spanish mine up in there somewhere. Cause it, uh, we found that, uh, that Spanish beam. Mm. So the Spaniards had it figured out. Some, somehow, and then the Indians killed them. Yeah, there was a, a lot of uh, a lot of strife in the region with uh, you know changing forces of, of different you know kind of nomadic people coming in. You had the established you know Puebloans or the 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 semi said you know semi uh, established like Navajos that had the places they would go, but they also kind of roamed around a bit. So there was a lot of a lot of different actors in that in that area the last you know 400 years or so. For sure, um, but yeah, it'd, it'd too bad there's not a record of that or anything. But you know, a lot of times they maybe tried to keep that on the on the down low and keep it to themselves. So well, with that mercury there, with the mercury there, and the granite there, and the veining that's producing gold, you know, there's something there. Yeah, well, the I mean, if you read Spanish mining law from about the 1600s, um, anybody could denounce a, a, a metallic vein or mine and denounce just means claim it basically and uh that you know anybody could do that it was fine they had uh, really intricate rules for like what if your claim runs into theirs and you know who gets precedence if your veins cross you know each mine in from a different direction and basically you they had rules for you could put any idle person to work <laughs> but you had to feed them and you had to give them sunday off uh that was you know that was actually pretty progressive for for the time uh as far as treatment of, of people and, you know, of course, that was the rule, and who knows what people really did, right? But that was that was the official rule. But, anyways, getting back to it, the no only the king could own a mercury mine, and the the reason, you know, it seems odd at first, but the reason they did that is because for the king to get their fifth, if everybody needed mercury in order to process their gold or their silver, then they were going to come to you for the mercury, and if they're coming to you for lots of mercury. And they're not giving you much of their of, of a you know the king's fifth the tax basically you know to go check out their operations and and see what's up because they're holding holding out on you so I think that's how they you know maintain control and maintained taxation is by controlling the refining step yeah. um, with the mercury so if there was mercury and there's not much mercury in New Mexico I mean the only stuff I know of is for the most part I mean it's I think there's some way up by like um Mo uh, not mora um cuesta up by cuesta i think in that molybdenite deposit and stuff up there there might be some but that's more of a texas thing so if there was local mercury right i mean the the powers that be would have been all over that and they might have kept it quiet because you know again it's so valuable that you know they'd want to control that they wouldn't want anybody well, else know, looking around everybody told me that there wasn't any there and uh our doll with the cobra mines, he, uh, I was sending my assays to him and he was assaying them through the cobra mines. And uh, he was really surprised when we came up with that high mercury count on it. 
Yeah, and again, but that's it, not a mistake, far, right? <laughs> but as far as now, I'm the only one that really knows where the mercury is, you know. Yeah, you said it kind of made a green halo when it would rain. Uh, yeah. There's kind of like a formation, and, and it just kind of came up in one area. Epidote. Yeah, epi epidotized, yeah. So, yeah, so that's, um, that's pretty yeah, interesting. You had to dig down into it a couple feet, and then you could see the veins where they had fractured and come up into the dirt. But that is really interesting that's that is you can't you can't not i can't not see it now <laughs> you pointed it out so decross i mean there's usually a reason for the name of stuff and see that side over there i hiked mm -hmm. all the way to decross hiked all the way up there up into the crack and all oh, the man. way almost all the way up to the top really but it got so dangerous and oh, stuff yeah. was falling around me and then i went back over to that ridge and tried to climb up the ridge and up to the top because uh, Bob, he landed a helicopter up on top. Wow. And he went into a cave, he said, right here near T-Cross. Mm -hmm. And he found a bag of gold in there. Interesting. A bag of gold in a pot. Wow. Know, in the cave. Interesting. I mean, that's the thing is that D in the cross, you know, you some people might say they somebody made that. It also might just be the case it just stood out so much that they're like, well, that, you know, they're just going to use a natural landmark that's already there. Right. So, and that red spot's pretty fascinating. Yeah, when you look at this, and in some cases, when you look at it, you can be, see these little feathers coming out of it, like mm -hmm. that, and it runs up through there like that. It's it's real weird that it's that it's got that on it, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is just a looking out over from Decron. Yeah, I mean, that's just vast. A lot of area. And this is the back side. And that plateau's over in here somewhere. It could have that gypsum in it. And oh, where all the trees were like frozen in the gypsum, and there was that one. He said there was a black little little knob that came up, and it looked like that was some yeah, kind maybe of spring or something. Twenty-five foot tall. Really weird. But the whole ground, he said, it was like walking on ice. Ice. But it's gypsum. It's clear. Just kind of froze the whole landscape. That'd be something to see. I bet you didn't have a camera. I guess that was a while there, ago. This is Bell Mountain. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's it. I mean, those are kind of Dos Piloncios, you know, two haystacks. That's it. Um, I just wonder how far away you can see them and from what perspective, but coming in from this direction, you know, they'd be really good. You know, it's marks. weird when you're at the diggings and you're looking across there, those really stand out because these are from the diggings. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's, and, that's and your it's old weird. Vista. Like on some day, it's like they overlook the canyon. Hmm. And that's what, uh, that's what uh, Gautier always said, you know. He said, go to the dose. Piloncillos, yep. yeah. Two sugar loafs or haystacks is how I think Adams described it. Well, that's pretty cool, Ron. It's, uh, you know, uh, back in the day when you had to, you only had so much film and you only had so much time and you got you all this other gear. And, and so, you know, that's why there's a lot less photos from back then than now when you can, you know, everybody's got their phone, you can just snap stuff. That's so right. It was a lot harder. So those are from the day. So, yeah. You were up there, you were up there by yourself. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you didn't didn't have anybody to call. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. All right, well, thanks, Ron. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you.